Hello and welcome to Demon Interviews or Demon Media, technically in this case. Uh, this time because I have no video lined up as of recording this to put out. I'm going to be putting this out on the day that Ruby Volume Nine comes out because we're talking about Team Perp, my OC team from Ruby, and some of the alternative universe forms, uh, like Grimverse and Nightmare Variants. So if you haven't seen Ice Queendom, this is your first warning to, you know, leave out the last 20, 30 minutes of the video, something like that. But I'll remind you when we get there. So this time, unlike having Damon, who uh, did not draw anything from it, we have our the lovely artist who drew 90% of all the art you'll be seeing here today, the amazing Ash Bowling underscore art. Oh, that's my cue. Hey. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> that's my cue. <laughs> I changed the cue. It's fine. Uh, <laughs> but I forgot it. Man, we rehearsed this too for an hour. <laughs> for an hour and a half. <laughs> uh, so, and one piece of artwork you'll be seeing here later is named Papercraft on the Twitters. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I guess we just get right on into it. How this will go is kind of like last time, kind of not, because we actually have somebody who drew it and helped me with some of the information from him as well. Uh, we'll go over the information, we'll look at the art, because it'll be on screen, and yeah, we'll go, and then I'll ask our lovely artist, uh, Miss Ash, to talk about some of the ideas that might have, you know, inspired some of the artworks, and some of these have were made months and months ago, so, yeah. So, first of all is the lovely team leader, Dean Perp. Uh, he is a walking, talking Kamen Rider O's reference, um, <laughs> which was perfect because me and Ash both enjoy Kamen Rider O's very much. Uh, we cried in the new movie. Uh, <laughs> that's how much we enjoyed it. Uh, so his nicknames are always the fun, you know, Dino and Freak, because, you know, he is a faunus, a dinosaur faunus, or if you don't like the thought of a dinosaur faunus, he is also a crocodile, if you want to go with that route. Uh, he's born in one of the outskirts cities of Atlas. You can just say it's one of the ones from Aerofell. I don't know the names of all of those ones, so just say it's one of them. I don't care. Uh, so his weapon is called King's Fang, thanks to... Ash helping me with that name. It's a battle axe, as you can see here in the lovely artwork, uh, that turns into a shotgun. Like these fold down to make the handle and then gun. Because everything in Ruby turns into a gun. He can add dust and all that fun stuff to it, but he's no expert with it, so he just shoves whatever he thinks will work into the gun and it usually works because it's a gun. <laughs> then his semblance is named Frozen Armor. With every, with each hit, a layer of ice builds up on his body, anywhere on his body. When Dean's aura is the love, what the hell? I think it's supposed to say when his aura is low, not his love. So okay, we got to fix that later. Uh, when Dean's aura is low, he can make all of his frozen ar he can make all of the frozen armor that's on his body and shoot it off of his body. The more uh, you know push Emily away is the more of the tactic with it than to actually harm people. Uh, the more leftover aura he has, the more he can control where the shards go. But this ability is, you know, learned after evolution of said thing. And, um, like I said, he's a walking, talking comrade to O's Tutu Tira combo. Reference to his eyes, his weapon, his colors, his, his emblem, his tail. And, yeah. And even him just being from Atlas and it goes with it as well. And his semblance and all that. But, now I'm going to pass it over to the lovely artist Ash. Ash Bowling. And 
talk about some of the inspirations and some of like the art the direction that that she took with it. Okay. Uh, so pretty much uh, every character that you've ever given me to do art for usually comes in the reference of Hero Forge models, which mm -hmm. are very helpful because <laughs> very easy to make. They're very good for uh, character creation. Uh, and looking at Dean's Hero Forge, because I remember the, this artwork that I did of Dean was like so long ago, mm -hmm. like several months. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that I am seeing like and remembering all the differences that I made to it and all the changes I made. I think if I'm remembering correctly, like a lot of these changes and a lot of what I do mainly when it comes to doing artwork of taking the Hero Forge references is kind of just expanding on detail wise. Mm hmm and color palette changes because definitely from the hero forge i changed his tunic to the jacket to more fit with that snowy atlas environment mm -hmm. and also to break up some of the purple that was there i know his boots i added more detail of those to be like ropes and in the hero forge he had like these gigantic gigantic like wraps of gloves that I just changed that into wraps around his sleeves and then just some fingerless gloves mm -hmm. probably one of my favorite little details was something that I snuck in there was those little golden medallions hanging off his boots and arms as the nod to uh, Puto Tira and the medals I actually did not even see that until just now I, just said it. <laughs> I actually medals. did not know that <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I snuck those little medallions in there. I was just like, that's another little nod to Os. And I definitely kept those little shoulder pads that were in Hero Forge, but I definitely changed the color and made that emblem, which I, I'm i not the greatest at coming up with character emblems for Ruby. It's one of like the more, more aspects when I create or help design Ruby characters. That's more of where I have to try really hard. <laughs> yeah. And weapon design. Because I remember uh, getting into... Dean's weapon of designing a gun and an axe I had to make sure that um, we weren't making like a direct like literal copy of a uh, blowhard Professor Port's weapon yes that's the name I, I looked it up <laughs> its name is blowhard <laughs> anyway but like I remember thinking I was just like okay if we're gonna make like an axe it's also a gun like this cannot be a carbon copy of professor port's weapon so we yeah. developed it more into of like this double barrel shot i think it's like a double barrel shotgun mm -hmm. if i'm looking at it again correctly add the double barrel shotgun instead of what port has and the axe more tr and the blade more transform instead as well mm -hmm. so yeah and then of course all the color palette changes where I added some more whites and some more gold in there just to give him more of a like diverse color palette. Awesome. I do have to ask about the the gold on his shirt. Is that supposed to be like a T Rex on his shirt? I'm just double checking. Uh, yes, I remember when we talked about this of adding like some kind of like kind of like dinosaur esque like fangs and like pattern underneath there. Mm hmm. I'm gonna be honest, I maybe don't even remember what it actually looks like in full. Because <laughs> I remember I drew it in full and then I erased where uh, the jacket was covering it up. And I can't zoom sense. in on it right now. But, but yeah. yes, there was like an actual pattern work and like image underneath there to add more to that T Rex aspect. Yeah. Well, I love how he came out. And I know that the. The logo, the emblem, sorry, not logo, came from uh, Puta Tira's Tyranno medal as well, since that's also kind of where we're getting the Tyranno tail from as well. Uh, yeah, I think I, I took definitely some uh, form of reference from the medal. It's yeah. not like, it, it's not exactly the same head and the same look of it, It was, but a very referential influence from there. Yeah. To create something simplistic and also something that I could then warp and squeeze onto the uh the the, the shoulder pauldrons yes 
Man, he looks really cool. I always do love him, and I love his eyes, which are green as well, which was also in the Heroes Forge thing. But, like, Kuta Tira's eyes, the form, also had green eyes as well. Yeah, I think that... I can't remember if we took that from there, of changing it to the green eyes. I, I'm, I don't the remember. Is, in the Heroes Forge, it is, like, a purple, and I think I put it as oh, green okay. eyes for that little, that other aspect of yeah. just breaking that, breaking up the colors. But no, no, and you're right. You, you did that. I didn't do that. The, the Heroes Forge has purple eyes. God damn it. I'm yeah, I was uh, looking at the image, the Heroes Forge has purple eyes. So I think, yeah, I did that to, uh, once again, take from the Puto Tira form of Kamen Rider Os, and mm -hmm. then, again, bring up that color palette. So it's just like, there's that other color in there to break up all these other ones. That's true. Man, I do love this form. It looks form. Well, in the context of this video, that makes sense, but still. Uh, it, it looks really cool, and I love the little... Just, like, I'm still seeing, like, small details. It's like, I don't usually look at the images on my computer that often. So, like, I'm just now seeing, like, some like, the little white specks inside of, like, the black of his shoulder pads. Not shoulder pads, more like the, the connection for the white feathers. I'm just now seeing some of that. <laughs> and I just love, love all this. And signature. So now we're going to go on to the rest of his team that I just commissioned all at the same time. We all one piece of artwork because... I'm being honest here, it is cheaper. <laughs> that's what I, that, that's how I roll. That's exactly why I make some things in my pricing the way I do, so that uh, you need something like this, okay, we can find a way to get that for you in a way that's in your budget. Yep. Which I do appreciate. So, this time we're going to be talking about Umber... Squid. Squid? It, it's a word for brown. Uh, or, no, no, it's the scientific word for squirrel. That's what it was. <laughs> I think that's I what it was. Brown. Yeah. Because her primary colors are browns, and she has these little uh, meshes that she actually did make for herself to where she can fly like a squirrel using her semblance of air blaster, creating small bursts of air and wind to and can slightly control it. To a point, more just to help with like steering than anything else. Um, she also has two small sides that can turn shockingly into a gun. <laughs> uh, she was born within the city of Atlas. She is definitely the richest of them all in this group. Uh, she she pays for everything and makes people look cool. To quote Tony Stark. Uh. <laughs> uh and instead of being the stereotypical Atlas raging racist, um, she is the opposite. She's very much for Faunus rights, like, to the point where, like, because she also has very much, like, Nora energy. <laughs> she, and she also has a prosthetic arm. I don't know why. One of the rallies she went to, somebody ripped her arm off there. That's canon now that's what happened <laughs> eh, um to the point where persimmon which we'll talk who we'll talk about a little bit more later and dean sometimes are like okay calm calm yourself a little bit uh but uh yeah um that's pretty much the main information about umber that i have on hand uh, Ash, what, what, what My... would you do to funny squirrel lady? Okay, so I have her Hero Forge pulled up, and I think Umber went through, like, some of the most changes, I think, in my opinion. Yes. Of what we changed from the Hero Forge. Uh, definitely kept her hair and the goggles the same, because I like those. Definitely took, like, her posing, and, like, her personality reminded me of, like, Hanji from Attack on Titan. Uh, uh-huh. That kind of stuff, so I kind of, like, gave her those vibes. Uh, definitely, like, her whole entire outfit changed, kind of, because we kept kind of, like, that jumpsuit aspect underneath of it, mm -hmm. but then kind of expanded upon that, because it was, like, a little plain-looking in Hero Forge. 
Yeah. And I, I have the other, uh, I found, I have the file open for the reference images, but I actually remember I went and looked up, like, I don't know if the correct word for it, uh, it's just, I'm trying to remember exactly what I googled was, um, like, Victorian or, like, steampunk style mm -hmm. uh, shirts and some dresses, because, like, her corset, uh, like, the middle where it buttons up and it connects to it, that was kind of, like, a mix of something that Penny has and then a like steampunk corset that I found that was like very long and I just shortened it and added the frills and the purple edging to it and the wait hold on hold on I hit a button wrong hold on I fucked it all up fucked it all up I yeah that that wasn't the problem Hello? I'm Hello. still here. Okay, well, uh, okay, so what happened was, uh, so, hi everybody, you get to see my, <laughs> my Discord for a second, because I have to fix everything. Uh, and also some references for future. Uh, so what I, what happened was I accidentally ch changed the device I was using to have be on the call with Ash to my phone. <laughs> uh, uh oh. But I changed it back. We're back in business. Uh, so as you were saying, uh, frills under purple. Yes. Oh, okay, yeah. I had her frills that I added under that little corset, like half skirt dress, and then added the purple lining to it. And then her shirt underneath was literally just a, again, like this little Victorian shirt that I found for reference with the the bow on the end and I just put that into her color scheme exactly and I think it was when we changed her boots up a little to be more of the uh thing I can't see because you're not sharing your screen anymore I'm not I thought I, I, thought no. I said to share <laughs> curse you yeah it says I'm sharing it I don't see it uh, <laughs> we're having all the problems. How? Uh, okay. okay, there it is. Okay. There it is. Last time it automatically. Okay. See, I think it was like definitely I changed up her shoes a little because hers seemed like these like lace up snow boots, and I changed them to more like regular, more like RPG style boots. Yeah belt because it's groovy yes i That's agree her, like her weapons her weapons were like again like weapon design especially like more of like the really like detail level work of it is where again i have to try hard yeah <laughs> on some things if it's like not fully established if it's not something that's been fully established it's like okay i gotta really try hard on this and yeah. i really if it's not kind of obvious, they really just kind of took a lot of reference look at from Crescent Rose, Maria Calavera, as yeah. well as um, as well as kind of a weapon that I have designed for one of my own characters. Oh, just as a point of uh, reference because of the similar blade style. Yeah, doesn't look exactly the same, obviously. <laughs> yeah, because I know that one of the biggest things was that the image I sent you at the time was her with a sword. And I was like, I don't want the sword. The sword is stupid for her. So I think that's the only thing I changed from the Hero's Forge image I just now, I sent you today and the one I sent you back then. Yeah, because I think we worked out. I think I remember us talking about working out, like, what weapons would she have instead of yeah, this? And I, and I thought, like, scythes with, like, these like small ones, like, are a good, like, can just like race by somebody while flying and just like hit them with it or something. Yeah, Instead like using like, the sizer, or... uh, if it's the right term, I might be wrong. Uh, Kusarigama. I might be wrong. I have no idea. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's pretty much how it went with Umber. Yeah. Uh, and now we're going to be talking about another person on the same image. Raze. Raze Verde. Uh, who is the remnant equivalent of Hispanic, which 
would probably still be Hispanic, but take that how you will. Uh, he is actually, his birthplace is in Mantle. His family is large, and he actually did not have that much money, like his family never did, so that's why he just has a wooden baseball bat. Uh, with the only customization, which can't be seen in the image here, but on the Heroes Forge, it has uh, the gripping that his hand is over is actually purple as well, but that's the only thing that's technically special. It's just a cheap wooden bat that he does break sometimes, and then he has to replace. Um, and at this time of this recording, and probably when this video comes out, uh, his semblance is unknown, and I have no idea what it's going to be. <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah, so, Ash, please fill us in on some of the ideas you had for Ray's birthday, and even if you have an idea for his semblance as well. And if you don't, that's fine. That's just an added thing. Mm -hmm. Semblance definitely is something we could talk later. Yes. Because <laughs> you and me, I know you and me getting into talks about semblance design could go on for a while. Yeah. <laughs> it, you, people will understand that with the next one. Yeah. So, uh, Reese, uh, was definitely I definitely added a lot more detail to his outfit mm -hmm. from the Heroes Forge. Um, it was just kind of like your basic leather jacket and some jeans with the lace up boots, which I I kept the lace up boots the same. Pretty much the boots are pretty much exactly the same. I think I just added a little bit more purple into them. I gave them kind of like that candy stripe look that yeah. kind of has throughout the rest of it. Yeah, and you also made the laces a bit thinner, but that's purely because Heroes Forge is a place where you can buy miniatures, so all the things have to be, like, six times thicker. And that'll also be something yeah. that pu that, uh, uh, maybe, like, when the video comes live, I'll just post the pictures of the Heroes Forge ones so people can see them so they know what we're talking about. Yeah, so it's, like, definitely, like, the big bulk of his change was just giving more detail to that outfit, because, like, he's the bad boy, like, I wear the leather jacket, I wear the leather pants. So yeah. pretty much, uh, I took I did what Monty did for Team Sun in designing them, and I looked directly at K-pop groups and their <laughs> outfits and how they looked. And as I DM'd you and showed you my actual reference photos, is one of those is the group Big Bang that Team Sun was based on in like some more leather outfits, and then another set of K-pop idols in some more leather outfits. So his top jacket was actually. Um, kind of like a crop jacket it didn't have sleeves and then i just added sleeves to it and then yeah. i think i added uh like the bottom of the belt from another one and then i just gave the pockets more uh belts and pa like more pockets and belts because he's the bad boy and that's what he needs <laughs> and then pockets. i just added more uh more of that purple magenta throughout his look just to again break up some of that, that black and green and then the funniest thing was I added that one little strand of hair. Yes. That one little strand of hair can do. He doesn't have it in the Heroes Forge. And I was just like, no, nah, every bad part of my job as an artist is to give the client what they want. But then also my underlying second job is to make suggestions to the client that they will accept. <laughs> so one of those was adding the little strand of hair where it's like, mm, bad boy characters need a strand of hair that falls down. Yeah. Trust me. Trust me. The audience loves it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I bet they will. And I'll also um, uh, post these images as well on the uh, Indian interviews, uh, Instagram and stuff. I think I already posted most of these in the Discord uh, when I got them, and like with their references as well as put like you know a few posts out there for the different characters and stuff. Because one of the things I thought of when I was thinking about Ray's the first time was that, like, was very much grease. Like, those type of greasers. You know what I mean? With the full leather and the baseball bat and, like, I'm gonna beat you up and then I'm gonna sing about my car. And all that yep. type of thing. Yeah, like that 50s and 60s vibe. Exactly. Uh, so, now we're gonna go on to Persimmon. The lovely fluffy danger of <laughs> Persimmon Black. Who is a red panda faunus? She actually has two traits: her faunus ears and her tail. Um, I actually did a poll with some friends when I was 
trying to figure out like what animal percentage would be. And I was like, I wanted to be a faunus because I wanted to be like, you know, two are human, two are faunuses. And I just, I asked some friends. I think it was, I think the options were like cat, wolf, and red panda or something like that were the ones I thought of. And red panda won. I think they're mainly joking, but I don't care. I made it a red panda. <laughs> so she has that fluffy tail and the ears. And she, her birthplace is in Menagerie. I think I said that correctly. And she has two swords, some dueling blades, that can be enhanced with different types of dust. Like any like fire-based dust can you know make her sword light on fire. But that's something she really doesn't need. That's just overkill for if you count if you look at her semblance, uh, which is the one that me and Ash talked about for what an hour at one point or longer. Maybe I was just the springboard. I was yeah. just the springboard to spitball and suggest you things and let you run with them. <laughs> Don't you mean the springy board? It was terrible. <laughs> I, I know, I know. Uh, called Passion Blaze or Passionate Blaze. Nobody knows. Sometimes, and Persimmon's very shy, so if people like mess it up, she just like nods and agrees. She's so at like at one point, she's like, I don't even care what it's called it anymore. I'm doing it. And uh, she's shy in front of people she doesn't know, but when she's like with a, at least one of her friends or her teammates, uh, she's very much more out there and, and much more brave and stuff like that. Uh, these are all very much like their battle outfits, like the and we'll see in the next slide her their you know school outfit because they go to Atlas Academy because that's just where they all went. Um. Uh, so passionate blaze, uh, uh, for different emotions causes a human torch effect. It, the character from Marvel, uh, the stronger the emotion, the hotter the flame, and each emotion has different has a different secondary effect. Like sadness makes the flame blue, and cold rage is red and extra hot. Just in addition to the extra from the strength of the emotion is another set from the rage. Envy is green, uh, which is a very poisonous or sickness, nausea type of effect. Uh, yes, I took some of these colors from Inside Out. Uh, uh, so, Love is pink and has an electric effect on people. I forgot to put a comma right there. But the next one is Embarrassment, which is orange, which has a little bit of emotional manipulation. and But still, you know, fire. And Hate is black. Hate, like remorse, not remorse, uh, hate, guilt. Any strong negative emotion in that sphere is black, which causes her to do to have like supernova types of heat, but like hate and like it, it's 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 bad. It, you do not want to anger the fluffy noodle. <laughs> and Persimmon and Dean are the only ones in a quote unquote canon relationship. I was going back and forth on either Dean and Umber, Dean and Persimmon, or Dean and no one in the group. Because I'm sorry, I'm a horrible person. They're all just they're all just straight. I'm sorry. Um, Umber might be might be gay. I don't know. I'll think about that later. Right now. But um so Ash, tell me. Tell me some of the thoughts you had while making Persimmon, because I know there was a few changes. Yeah, for Persim <laughs> yeah, had like kind of a bigger change to her outfit and her look as well, as well as her developing her weapon mm -hmm. beyond what was given in uh, Hero Forge. Because definitely yeah. her outfit, basically the only thing that really changed changed was giving her that uh, like that coat with no sleeves, like that basically that vest thing. Yeah. I don't have the right terminology for what that piece of clothing is called. And her shoes. Her shoes just became, like, these normal little ankle boots that I thought yeah. fit kind of her vibe and character better than, like, yeah. laced-up boots. Yeah. 
which actually that that little like vest clothing was actually inspired from uh, being an atlas. I was like, okay, I took influence from the Happy Hunters designs. Yeah. Kind of the way that how they have some of those uh, vests and coats as well. So it's like I think this would be like kind of a good nod or influential thing in it, and also like that color of using that tan once again adds something to the color palette and makes it pop a little bit more and come forward. Mm -hmm. I think it was I also added the uh, the little orange socks to her as well. Yeah. Just to add more of that because she didn't have them in the Hero Forge. Yeah. Her and then oh, sorry, go ahead. Her weapon is one that I think we worked on together to develop further. Mm -hmm. Where I think it was the way that I was designing it because her weapon was going to be one that wasn't really a gun as well. So it was just more of a practical melee weapon. Mm -hmm. So I think it was the way that I... Uh, designed it was uh if you like zoom in on the details you can't see it where uh below like the dust canisters they will spin around at the end of there and there is a little notch you can mainly see it under like the red one and the one mm -hmm. that's in her right hand is where basically the thought of was that that spins and whichever dust canister she's going to use will then go into the handle and be loaded there and so then that dust will be dispersed throughout her sword with those little diamonds that go down all the way to the end. Mm -hmm. So they'll light up with the color of that. So that's what I kind of thought about with making, rub rubifying um, her swords a little bit. And also changing up the hilt, giving it a hilt. Because yeah. her original one did not have a hilt, so I just gave her a... It, yeah, it, I don't, it, it, if it looks a little bit weird, yeah, it's a weird hilt, but... It's ruby. I just kind of or something. weird. <laughs> but I I am curious to think about like, would she have to manually spin the canisters? Kind of like a no, six, like... no. I would think that there's like a button where that's all she has to press, or yeah. like there's something on there where it'll just automatically like it'll give it a spin or it'll load into the next one. Yeah, it's under here. It's just somewhere under there. We don't have it's to see it. Right. There. You, just, you just don't see it on camera right now. Yeah. Or with some ruby weapons, like, don't don't think about it where the button is, or where where you activate that. Don't think about it. Don't think about the where button, the button is. It just the does. The button is in your mind. It just your does. Mind's eye. Just does. Just does it. So here is the Team Perp group shot, where everybody has, pretty much everybody has one piece of clothing from their battle outfit on at all times. Dean with his handkerchief that mostly goes over his mouth, which is a mask because of the snow. Uh, Persimmon, I'm just going to go in this order, has a head, has a bandana on her head to cover her Faunus ear trace. But uh, each member has, actually does have a extra one in their pocket in case a cardigan, a cardigan, cardigan, uh, he's a sweater. In case he like a bully like him, like just rips it off and starts, you know, making fun of her. Each member, if they're with her, has an extra one with them. Uh, Umber has the goggles on, and Ray is being the cool guy he is. He is wearing two jackets at the same time. Uh, so he's also very warm right now. As you notice, they're in the cold, so they're he's the only one not cold right now in their outfit. So, but please, please um explain to the class uh what, what what's going on here in your opinion. Or uh, you I think it was what we talked about was like they're just kind of basically like they're hanging out between classes or after classes. Maybe they're even ditching class. <laughs> That's a ditch. I think that was the word I maybe, used. Maybe they're ditching class, <laughs> and they're just decided to go hang out in the uh the trading rooms that yeah. Atlas have that we see in Volume Seven. <sighs> and and the teachers are fine with most of their stuff because like even Ray is like his color his jacket's very like dark in color so it's like it's close enough like they they just don't care he just keeps doing it so they gave up yeah and like he even has like extras in his closet in case they take him he just has, he just has extras that's the only thing he spends his money on he buys like two dollar baseball bats from like some dude on the corner but he'll spend his money on new jackets. His custom jacket he has to have. The bat breaks. 
no problem. The jacket rips. You made a horrible mistake. <laughs> yes. Oh god, now I was like imagining like somebody like grabs him when they're trying to like usher like the swimming out from like somebody like, bullying them and somebody rips his jacket just like the, the littlest bit. You know, a button just pops off. And he just looks at them with like the fires of hell and just beats them down with the bat until it breaks. <laughs> that got really violent now, didn't it? Uh, uh, speaking yeah. of, but speaking of violent, here's the Grimverse AU. <laughs> Uh, so this is Grim Dean, the only artwork that I've gotten from Papercraft so far. In the reference sheet, I want to say this now, the the top two right here are made by Dishwasher 1910, and the bottom Grim Jean is made by Mark 50, M R K 50. Um, some of the other references to here is Forge right here, or her. And edgy greed. Cause isn't that the official name for it? It's just like edgy greed. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I think I think it's that, and then there's pure you greed, which is the other one. I think that's what it is. I think that's the official terminology for that. Cause, cause I needed to have him have a different name. Uh, you know, I'm a I'm a fake I'm a fake girl fan of Common Rider because I don't know the name. <laughs> I'm a fake fan. <laughs> Hashtag fake fan. Um. This has been, like, the perfect time for me to, like, put up, like, the Ankh artwork you made for me. Um, but this is Grim Dean, drawn by Papercraft. Oh, I just now realized, he still put the little gold medal on his ankle. Oh, yeah, you didn't see that? <laughs> I didn't see that, and, like... I saw that, and I was just like, hey! <laughs> he still has one. <laughs> I love that. I, I didn't notice or know what that was a reference to. I, also fake fan. Uh, until today. I did not know that. I didn't I didn't see it on the Grim one until just now. Um But yeah. Uh he has the heterochromia eyes. Like like Ray's does, Ray's has a green and a purple eye. He has a grim version of his per of I, sh I should have made it green. Well, when I commissioned this to you as well, I was going to say, also make it black and green. <laughs> and then the other one is a grim eye being black with the red center and everything. Um, uh, as you can see, Papercraft definitely went with a Mark 50 and uh, dishwasher 1910 approach with the, with the grim arm. Which I love very much. It looks very cool in my opinion. Uh, and uh, yeah, I love the axe. I love how a lot of this came out. And even the tail, it goes from the deep purple of the normal one down into that lighter color. Which I think is also a reference to this. For, to, for the reference page ones as well. So, and, and a funny story is that, okay, I've had bad experience with artists in the past. Just, that's just my, that it happens when you commission a lot of people for artwork. And I was so panicked when I saw that um, Papercraft put the logo that Ash made. That's my own paranoia. Ash is an amazing person. Uh, and I was like, please don't hate me. I was like, I was like, I think I'm like hyperventilating at the moment or something, being like, "Please don't hate me." And, and and she was like, "I don't care. It's fine. Thank you for telling me, but it's fine." I'm gonna cancel you on Twitter for this. <laughs> That's it. You're gonna get ratioed. <laughs> oh God. Uh... <laughs> no, I was like, yeah, I was like, no, I, I don't have any problem with it. Like, literally, it's not my character. I no. just. Put that into the design like like no i'm not gonna like trademark that and be like no one else is allowed to draw it <laughs> uh, <laughs> and i did notice that with this he also made him short lived as well i knew that earlier but i thought it was interesting because i like because like here he is not with the reference from heroes forge he very much went with a approach with 
combining the Dean that that the amazing Ash made and turning him into the grim form that either Dishwasher or Mark 50 would make, which I appreciate because, you know, they're on the reference sheet. I love their artwork as well. And, but the only thing is, the only small thing is that if, it, the only thing that's the same from the, the Heroes Forge reference, which is the big one, is the eyes. And even the same eye shape. Which I did, I did notice when you zoom in on it. Like this red eye does have the same shape that I made this one red eye. But that's the only thing I I noticed in it that someone could call a negative, but I like, but I'm not calling it a negative. But I do wish to ask you, since you are the original person who drew Dean for me, what path would you have taken with it? Either with the pure reference sheet that I have here, or at also adding in to the reference sheet the one from Papercraft. Not changing Papercraft at all, but just adding him to the reference sheet is what I mean. Yeah, using Papercraft's like as a reference point, first off, I love the axe. Yes. So I definitely would love to, of course, if, if I'm able to, if, like use that, use that also that axe as well. And mm -hmm. I do love like that aspect taken from uh, some of the other references as well of kind of like that dinosaur like arm i feel like the, that's very good for like grim like mm -hmm. i do like that and i know we talked about this before in the rehearsal <laughs> quote unquote. i didn't record at all uh. <laughs> the rehearsal of offhand of my approach especially because of what we'll be looking at uh in a little bit with the other members of team perp in grim form is with a uh, more like dishwasher's route and canon ruby is that red white black and like orange color palette more hand so like there'd be less purple mm -hmm. here i do definitely think i said that i would what i would love to work in from like going off of the heroes forge reference is those pauldrons definitely make them look more t-rex like than dragon like because hero forge mm -hmm. limitations yeah. but i definitely love those and like giving it kind of him like Definitely, like, you know, T-Rex is c considered offhand king of the dinosaurs uh, yeah. to a lot of people. So it gives, like, gives, like that, that kingly vibe of just, like, somebody of importance if we have this whole entire Grimverse team. Yeah. That he's the one in charge. Yeah. It exert, like, exerting that power. I don't think I'd make him shirtless. <laughs> I'd probably keep a shirt on him. For this one. Not the other one that we'll see in a minute. Yeah, no, that was the other one. Yeah, I... Yeah. I definitely think I, what I said is I'd like to implement, like, parts of bone armor that Grimm have. I think that'd be very fitting for Dean. Yeah. I agree. The, the one thing I always love is, like, when Grimm versus Alien... Not Alien... Not Ben 10. Not making that video yet. Um, when their ability, their stuff is like a mutation, almost more than just slapping grim armor on someone and making them pale. Cause I, cause I am already pale. I, if I want to be a demon looking thing, I don't want somebody to slap armor on me. I want it to be like a mutation esque, like the giant grim arm and stuff like that. Which we'll see. I do intend on asking for that in the future. Mm -hmm. oh, excuse me. Sorry. But uh, so now we're going to carry on to Umber. Grim Umber. And since uh, I have no artwork for Grim Umber, Rays, or um, Persimmon, same thing with the Nightmare ones. If we get to them, I don't have ones for those three either. Those will be being made in the future when I have money. And when some people's commissions open up again, and they don't have a backlog of people, um, paper crap. No, um, <laughs> kidding. Uh, but uh, so Ash, looking at at this lovely, lovely lady here, what what was something? Because like I always okay. So for reference, I use the capes for the people who don't know, as a reference for her underarm, like um. Flying squirrel esque outfit. 
So I want that point to be stated before I say, uh, what would something you like? What what would you do with this? What would you do with this lovely lady to make it either match closer to what your idea was for Grim Dean or Papercraft's version of Green Grim Dean or anything along those lines? Is what I'm meaning. What'd you do to it? Yeah. Uh. So I think it was one of my first thoughts was, uh, that cape that she has is kind of like the opposite effect of a more terrifying version since it's this grim or hor horrifying version mm -hmm. of that instead of invoking like flying squirrel give it like the more look of like those wings that the hound sprouts in volume 8 mm -hmm. of those types of wings to give it like this more terrifying look to it though it still gives that aspect of maybe she'll fly around but it's <laughs> even scarier yeah uh, I also talked about uh, with her goggles like keeping that part of her because you know that's an iconic look to her character but mm -hmm. being like this grim version of her she wouldn't really need it so give them like the more look of like they're cracked and, and broken i had the idea of like one is absolutely broken glass so if they do slip over her face you just see like the glowing grim eye through through that hole in the glass mm -hmm. you know put, put some put some nightmare fuel into someone yeah I definitely like her boots for this. Like Which we'll see a lot more. <laughs> to it. And I'd probably add like some more detail to like the top area. Whether that'd be the form of like whatever kind of different clothes there are or adding like any kind of pieces of armor or a look. Something mm -hmm. just to add a little bit more detail in there. And I, I like the color form. I would definitely think in a Grim universe she wouldn't like have a prosthetic. There would probably be more something like a Grim arm there or something. Yeah, like maybe like closer to um, Cinders than what Dean yeah. has at this point. Cinders, something that's maybe a little bit more thicker and terrifying. <laughs> yeah, because right now I just made it to where it's like um, rusted. That yeah, that color palette too kind of suggests that because again, Hero Forge limitations. Yeah. Uh, what that, about the weapon? I know you're talking about some that uh, weapons are sometimes hard, but or like uh, yeah, there's limitations with it. But what, what's what's some things you'd probably do with that as well? Something like a grim-like weapon. I believe I mm -hmm. talked about this. Of uh, definitely, I like the one giant using like the having like one giant scythe instead of the two smaller ones. Again, give a more nightmarish, not in reference to the nightmare versions we'll get into later, but something that's <laughs> more like it's it's terrifying and intimidating mm -hmm. and thinking about like would that blade be like a the gigantic talon of some kind of grim or a gigantic piece of bone mm -hmm. i love that idea of it being like a talon or a tooth of something or just like well talons are claws but like claws from like you know a giant yeah. ursa or something like that Um, but yeah, and you'll, people will probably know this in a little bit, is that, like, w with Umber and with the reference with Grim Dean, I gave this weird, like, claw, like, glove to all of them as well, to, like, reference, like, sh just, just the nails being sharper in general, you know, sharp in general for all of them. I think I also gave the same pants to Grim per Persimmon as well with the boots. <laughs> just different colors. But going on, we're talking about Grim Rays with one green eye and the other one being um, the red one. Uh, again, with the black backing as the you know, Grim and all that fun stuff. Uh, so, uh, so these are technically flame effects or flame prosthetics is what they're kind of like labeled as in Heroes Forge, but those are just like replacements for like grim arms in general. So I would like to know kind of like your thought process for it. I know we talked about some in the non never recorded thing. <laughs> uh yeah, um uh, so definitely I think it was we talked about for like his arms, because we wanted that to be like how he mainly fights. Mm -hmm. And it's his main form of like offensive, offense, offensive. I almost said offensiveness. I mean, 
He's just flipping the bird everywhere he goes, offending people. <laughs> um, Sticking in eyeballs. Yeah, just uh, thinking about, like, could it be that he just attaches, gets, like, different attachments, like, where the shoulder joint is of different grim arm. Like, maybe he'll have the arm of a Beowulf. Maybe he'll have an Ursa at some point. Maybe he'll put a Beringle on there. Yeah. But it feels like that's, like, his main, like, eye draw point of his grim version of a character. Mm-hmm. I definitely and... would keep the spikes on his back. I like that. Mm -hmm. I like that since we're going with like this open chest look. Uh, definitely, as I talked, I'd go more wild man hair because you know Evernight Castle doesn't have hair gel. Well, we don't know. I mean, like Watts has like some amazing hair. That's Watts though. <laughs> sure. And would he share? I'm sure Watts would. Watts would bring in contraband hair gel to Evernight Castle. <laughs> contraband hair gel. Contraband. <laughs> He's not supposed to fly with it. <laughs> the Nevermore will eat it and just get sick. Um. Oh, yeah, I'd give him like that one. It's, you know, instead of instead of one, one strand of hair, there, there's now two. There's two there's strands two. of hair. One for two and like just they I think like, they're longer too because like just like wild man hair. So like it just like one strand over each eye. Exactly. He also has a bone foot, because I was thinking, like, bones and all that fun stuff. Yeah. Too. I feel like I can see that, of just, like, Grimclaw foot. Yeah. And we were also talking about him having more than just the two arms, as well. Yeah, the possibility of, like, is he gonna have, like, do what Stitch does, and, he, and he's gonna have, like, two more arms pop out at the bottom. Yes. <laughs> like, four arms from Ben 10, but, like, creepier. <laughs> Like, now I'm just, like, imagining, like, a bangle, like, technically arm, but, like, an Ursa, like, hand attached. Like, he's, like, his arms and stuff are very stitched together. Like, instead of it just being, like, a full-on, like, mutation when he turns into a Grim, it's just, like, his arms just, like, noped out of there. And Salem has just been, like, taught, like sewing, <laughs> practicing her sewing skills on, like, just getting the new arms onto him. And technically, this black and red would technically go down farther. I'm just telling the people who's watching. But yeah, Heroes that Forge that, like, says happens, that like, this that counts as his leg. <laughs> that this part and this part counts as his leg. <laughs> so, yeah. So now we're going to go on to the lovely Grim Persimmon, who the only thing we cannot see here is that she does also have like that Glasgow smile that like Heath Ledger's Joker has. But those are actually, like, her mouth opens from there as well. Like, she just has this massive mouth that can just tear into anything. And, uh, kind of like Grim Blake that a uh, dishwasher 1910 made that I did not know about <laughs> when I was coming up, I forgot about when I was coming up with the idea. Uh, but, yeah. And she does have a grim arm, one grim arm and one grim leg as well. And her tail got ripped off and put on the, I don't know, Beowulf or something. She turns into a Beowulf fauna set. <laughs> That'd be an, Maybe. That's an interesting comic. That's actually an interesting concept. A grim fauna. Like fauna with the grim attributes. Okay, anywho, but <laughs> technically that's what this is. Uh, but to t take the floor, what 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 are some things you'd keep, change, so on and for so forth. Okay, the uh, I know it's like there's there's not a lot of, exactly right now. I think this is the same problem I had earlier when I went over this before. Of uh, I don't presently have like a lot that I would change or things that I could think about with Persimmon here for a Grim version. Because, like, I like the mask. That's definitely something that I really like. Mm -hmm. I like that aspect of it. And I think I was talking about her weapons where, yeah. like, probably more like Grim bone swords or whatever it is. <laughs> I oh, don't know. Maybe they're made out of the same rocks that are in uh, 
those Evernight lands, the dark lands mm -hmm. as I call them. I think we also talked about like her taking them from like people she's killed and stuff like that. Yeah, possibly. And, and I made a joke about like one of them being like Jean's sword. Jean's sword is even though we have no idea where the, what's going on with that right now. Yes, that or you know the implication of murder. <laughs> just like yeah, John's. Just... We... Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, well, I was gonna say I was like gonna transition to I think what we talked about before was um, how Persimmons would be the bestly dressed of. Yeah. She'd be the bestly dressed of the Grim first versions of them. Like she's like Salem in Volume Eight. Like I'm gonna show up in my best. <laughs> in, in my in my and Sunday best. Good. I have to look good if I'm gonna go to war. Exactly. But next up, we're gonna go into the nightmare variants from Ruby Ice Queendom. So if you haven't seen that, Dean's reference sheet for this does have a spoiler for it. So it's a warning now. Okay. I'm waving my hand around like people can see me. Like, Dovin, like, behind the scenes, like, just fucking people saw. Like, we are not actually on camera with each other, we're just talking. So I'm just waving my hand for myself. <laughs> so here is Nightmare Dean. This one actually just got finished yesterday, as of this recording. Uh, you know, the reference is obviously Puto Tira from O's, still. The Cure You Greed from O's again and the nightmare variants the cool nightmare variants from ruby ice queendom and here is forge who's not a sponsor so ash what yes walk us through this what what's go what's going on with our big burly man well he's a dinosaur man <laughs> What Was he ever not? <laughs> this is a dinosaur man. Obviously. Obviously. Uh, but no, pretty much I just kind of stuck with the Hero Forge mainly for, for this because like there wasn't really a lot that I felt like needed to be changed with the Hero Forge. Because mm -hmm. with these nightmare versions, you could be a little bit more loose with them to create iconic looks and something that matches with the characters. Mainly the main things that I changed was just adjusting colors throughout of it, throughout it, mm -hmm. so that the colors wouldn't blend into each other and it breaks up and is more easily readable on attributes. Yeah. I get that. And I know we talked about this in the in the <laughs> rehearsal. Uh, how the background you did for him is actually similar colors and a similar feel to the fight between Grim, uh, a Nightmare Blake and Weiss. Which was totally an accident, because I was not looking at that image at all when I was doing the background. I just picked colors. <laughs> I was making sure they gave the right feel, and that they also weren't going to drown out the uh, Dean in the foreground. Yeah. So it just ended up that way, a happy accident, as Bob Ross calls it. Yeah. And I feel like the main, uh, I love that you added some scars to him as well. Ah, uh, yes, another one of my suggestions, where it's just like, I'm going to add this, <laughs> and, and, see like they, and they want that, and I'm going to convince them that you want this. You want this detail added. Oh, and I don't know if this is a purposeful detail or not, but the belt buckle on Dean's pants here is actually like the greeds with being gold instead of the purples. Ah. Let's save the reference, even if it wasn't. <laughs> Just save the reference. Just save the reference. I was mainly paying attention to the Hero Forge for this. <laughs> yeah. Which is really awesome because, like, I actually did also, um, for his nails and stuff, that's just from the greed as well. Like, I just, like, made that as best as I could into Heroes Forge. But, uh, yeah. Uh, what about his tail? 
You want to talk about his tail a little bit since you talked about it in the. Oh, yeah. Backup. I think it's his tail I, I adjusted just slightly from the Hero Forge because in the Hero Forge it's kind of got like this more square look towards the top. And mm -hmm. then it feels like it's more the diamond shape at the bottom. And while I was drawing, I was just like, this isn't going well. Like, this doesn't look right. And it doesn't flow very well. So I just kind of changed it into that more spiky diamond scale look throughout the entire thing. Yeah. But I think everything on here looks really cool. I love, and like, and, and just like taking the accidental reference out, I love the motion that the background has that just shows like the amount of rage they could also have as well yeah i wanted to like to add something in there with the background which is also why it's like at the background it's towards like the bottom it's like a lot darker so it's like kind of looks like this black nightmarish dust but also to lead the eye more to like the top of dean yeah it's all this is the science of composition this is, this <laughs> is science and art and, and then i just kind of added that other those little like motion blur that's literally just like a default effect brush that comes in uh the program that i use and i just <laughs> added a blur fill and i just added a blur filter to it perfect to a little bit more motion and kind of vibes and feeling into the piece yeah and i know we also did have a brief conversation about just like how his axe is also different as well from normal dean's because like he is much more barbarian caveman dino man yeah, than we, dean we is that of because i was like okay what do you want to do about the weapon do you want it to be directly the axe from the hero forge or do we want to mess with the uh the axe from his normal thing <laughs> originally he said yeah let's change it and then you went nah never mind <laughs> just go with the axe from hero forge yeah because like thinking about like if because like, like the nightmare dean is much more savage you know in a term that so i don't think he would let me just fold my gun and put some powder into the gun to shoot it. He would just be like, Arr! and wave my arm around when I made that sound. Like, just like slashing at people and stuff. But, uh, yeah, I th I think that's all with Nightmare Dean. Even though, like, I do, I have also, like, noticed some other things with, like, this, like, kind of like, green line that goes, like, across his hair a little bit. Like, it's, it's very much like it's his eye is glowing, which is was probably the point, but you know what I mean. Yeah. I love I love how it came out. I, I really... That little glow is, again, another little detail to push things. Yes. And I also noticed, like, when we were doing the non-recorded uh, uh, accidental thing, <laughs> was that uh, he has the exact same pose, give or take, to the Puto Tira image that was given in the reference page god this that's the pose you gave me that's what that you gave true. me you said yeah. you said use the pose and that's what i did and i just adjusted the hands a little bit yes because like, you I gave me a like, like, like i think three, it's like i punched three it different up a ideas bit. for it yeah and i know i'm gonna be commissioning the one of the other ones in the future being like you, you see that sketch? Do it again. <laughs> For the same character, go. Uh, uh, plug in my mouse. I just died. Um, but yeah. So this is Nightmare Umber. I just did her scythe today. Like, she had a sword still. But uh, yeah, uh, as you can see, she actually has the same pants and boots as her Grim version. <laughs> That's completely by accident. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, um, uh, like I said earlier, I used the capes as, like, a reference for, like, the, um, undersuit, wing, flap, squirrel suit thing. But, um, yeah, Ash, what, what are some things you would keep, change, adjust, so on and so forth with this lovely lady here, who is a oh, raging yeah. racist? I like the overall look of her outfit, and I definitely like, like, the darker browns. Mm-hmm. So, like, it keeps with her color palette, but once again, the darker colors kind of give her more of that nightmarish vibe that we want. Yeah. It's more cold look to her. So, and I like the tattered cape, where it's, just like, in her normal version, she would have that, that, that flight suit. 
but here th this version of Umber, she doesn't even need it. Yeah. Mainly with like the uh, concepts entered into night into Ice Queendom with um, them like in, like their powers being like enhanced and stuff. So maybe she doesn't even need the wings to the point where like she can just use her semblance to fly around. Um, I think the biggest thing I would ask to change would just be the weapon. Because I, I made that two seconds during my break at work. Like, that's not even a good weapon. <laughs> like, it's a good weapon, but it's not a good design for it. Needs another, needs a second draft. <laughs> yeah, it needs a few drafts. And also, uh, I made her, ar her prosthetic arm much more stereotypically colored. I guess is the right is the correct term for that, as well. Uh, what was it again? <laughs> uh, just very stereotypically colored for the prosthetic arm being like the black oh, and okay. grays. I mean, she's like I kind of like the darker colors because it's like if her color palette is already going to be some darker colors, I think the darker colors can fit as well on the prosthetic. Yeah, I agree. Like maybe like there'll be like another like maybe just a slightly lighter color in there just to you know break that up. Maybe like like some like the that, purple will like, come through as well, just from like the past designs and stuff. Yeah. Or something, or like the red ish, to break up the black and stuff. So, <laughs> I knew I had to do one of these. One of them had to be Kid Jean, basically. Uh. So. Yeah, that's what I did with the rays. <laughs> I made him child. Uh, I made his slippers the same, like the same side being the same color of his eyes, with their with his heterochromia, and his hair. He, he's too young for hair gel. He doesn't use it. So, uh, yeah. Um, other than making his face not as manly or his hands, uh, what are some other things you might want to like change about it or anything like that? I know I talked about it, I was like, there's, there's not a lot that I feel like could change with this one. Because, like, we've already got, like, th this is, like, one that kind of breaks up the pattern mm -hmm. of... We went more with the childlike version, and the Jean route was, like, I love the little bunny slippers, that's a cute little detail, and how they're differently colored on each foot, so it keeps that pattern with him as well. Mm -hmm. So I feel like it would just be more, like, playing with different ideas of just, like, does he have different pajamas? Are there more, like, patterns and details to his pajamas uh different hairstyle type where like where the hair is down but if they're different kind of types does he have like really curl does he have curlier hair is it shaggier yeah that makes sense yeah i i just have this uh, like this image of them all trying to like get like back to themselves like a normal form of themselves kind of and ray's having to like run around from like run away from the enemies and like in Rise of the Guardians with the Easter Bunny when he was little, he just like kind of goes underneath the car, he turns back, and then somebody pulls him out, and he has his bat in his hand, and he's like, oh, and he just smacks him upside the head or something. I, I just love that image in my head about it. And can we all just agree that like I wish they never did the baby thing with Jean? If if it's a same if it's in the same category as what happened to Weiss, I feel like they shouldn't have done it, or he's done something. Why did he have to be a baby? Sorry, uh, that's my own <laughs> my own criticism about Ice Queen. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, now we're going to go on to the last one, being Nightmare Persimmon, and uh, so yeah. Uh, very different, um, uh, I think, I think I gave the same teeth that I gave Dean to her, and also with the, um, Nightmares, I think, not Nightmares, these are the Nightmares, with the, uh, Grim ones as well, I think I gave, no, I gave the shark teeth to them, but, uh, yeah, um, so, Ash, what, what are some things that stand out to you about the design that you would want to emphasize emphasize that's not the word but I don't care anymore 
about in what if you're making the artwork for this character. So I definitely like um I like the legs. I like mm -hmm. the legs on this and the armor that it has. So pretty much looking immediately at her outfit, it gives me Sienna Khan vibes in the way the outfit lays and how it feels on her. Mm -hmm. So it's like I very much like that, and I like the top. And I did say when you showed me another uh, angle of this, is that probably one thing that I would change is I take out the undershirt so that it's more of like this tank top tunic. I don't know if that's the correct, you know, terminology for the what that type of top would be. Mm -hmm. And then it's those sleeves on her arm are kind of isolated and more glove like. Yeah. So that's like you've got like that bare shoulder showing, so it kind of breaks it up a little bit. Yeah. And then I definitely Makes fixed whatever that chest place armor is. I know that's a Hero Forge limitations and how weird it made that look. So yeah. So that's like a piece of armor. Yeah, because I was messing with it, and that is the metal color. <laughs> yeah, it's just it's just one of Hero Forge's limitations and how it makes it, a couple things might look a little weird. Yeah, because. I was like, other than that, I like the overall look of this and yeah. the vibes it gives off. And it's kind of like this, again, it's got like this stark contrast to her usual outfit. Yeah. And I know one of the things you talked about was like giving her some scars as well, since she's very much like a warrior yeah. look. Like, yeah. Awesome. Um, is there anything else you want to add, either about this version of Persimmon or about any of the characters we went over today? Because this is the last one. Um, I think I've covered everything, all my thoughts <laughs> that I had Perfect. prepared. Um, uh, is there anything you want to plug as well? Because this will be coming out um, on the day that Ruby Volume 9 comes out. Uh, oh, am I doing a shameless plug here? Yeah, that... <laughs> oh, okay, shameless plug. Uh, well, I'm an artist, and obviously I, anything I post can be found mainly on my Twitter. That's where I mainly post artwork and keep it professional. Uh, the same name from here, ashbowling underscore art. That's mainly where I find my Twitter. I go by ashbowling art on Tumblr as well, but that's more of my meme place. <laughs> that's where I will go off the rails. <laughs> And post art as well as memes, but for mostly art and stuff, that's my Twitter. Awesome. Um, and you can also see Ash on a few of our other videos as well, playing Ankh in the Comrade video, playing Tyrion in the Ruby Villains Part 1, and Neo in Ruby Villains Part 2. Um, and also she has her own video um on her channel uh interviewing her about her cosplay career as well uh so yeah so if you enjoyed this video please do say so <laughs> and uh yeah i will see you all in the next video bye Like, comment, subscribe, all that fun stuff. We were talking about these guys for three hours. Or for two hours. It or... has not been two hours. It's only it... been like an hour. <laughs> it's almost about to be an hour and a half. Sorry. That was just but... rehearsal. Wait, this is the rehearsal? Wait, were we recording that whole time? I thought we were just doing yeah. a rehearsal version. No, this is the whole thing. <laughs> Oh my god, no, you didn't say that. Now I oh, feel just, bad. We, we can do it again, that's fine, I don't care. I, you told me that when we started, we are just like, oh yeah, no, like, this is just rehearsal, okay? And then we'll go do, we're gonna go through it real quick, and then, you know, I'll ask you it again so you can think about it later, and then we'll come back. Well then. I didn't know that we had actually started, because I was asked, I was like, oh, we're recording, you're just like, no, we're just kind of going through it real quick. Oh, well, I'm, I'm stupid. Well. We can do it again and just do a quick version as well. That's why I, I didn't care. go into detail on said things. They're just like, oh, I'll go into detail later when we like actually get into it. Oh, well then. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is going to be... Th I'm just going to chop off this back half and make it a blooper. Because we were just going...